Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. I have to apologise because this voice, oh, it's not going to be nice to listen to. You sound like Barry White. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, hey, maybe our female demographic are going to go, hey, I can tolerate this week, Tony Gravelwood and Barry White. Well, you look like Barry White, Barry White a little because this is, by the way, for people watching on YouTube, this is the smartest I've ever seen you. Well, thank you. Um, audio listeners, I am wearing uh, smart shoes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea black, boots, black, the Chelsea, on. Chelsea boots. I'm wearing a, a, a roll neck, a, uh, you know, a, a, what, what do you call that? Yeah, roll neck. Yeah. Um, it's all dark. It's but I'm going to a fancy thing later. You look like a man at CNA. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time to go home and get changed, so I had to come this morning. I think I should start dressing like this more often. I, I think, think you should as why well. Why not? A bit formal, you know, sit down, do a podcast, look, look nice. The thing is, though, mate, is when you dress nicely all the time, mm. it then becomes like the norm. Well, then you have to. Y and yeah. if you wear a t-shirt, everyone's like, "Oh, I look, look, look like a bit of a but slob." Also, when you go somewhere posh mm. and you always dress nicely, and then you go somewhere posh, it's so uh, you look the same. <laughs> yeah, but you can never be overdressed. Do you know that? You can never be overdressed. You can only ever be underdressed. Shadow. It, it's a true fact. Think about it. Go to a barbecue in a pub mm. in a suit. Mm. Who cares? You're in a suit. You look good. But go to a funeral in a t-shirt and shorts. Oh, awkward. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a fundamental <laughs> fact. I'll so you're, it's always worth making a bit more effort than you think. Right. I mean, I'm not one to... I was going to say, why don't you take your own <laughs> I, don't, I don't fly that flag. <laughs> no. But maybe... But hey, this could be a start. Maybe, you know, if I get... You're the first nice comment I've got. Actually, to be fair, my oh. wife also gave me a knife comment. Well, she's probably surprised. Probably never seen she you like that. She was very surprised. She said, oh, it looks nice, doesn't it, to, to the baby? Oh, actually, actually, I'm going to take that last statement back, by the way, is the smartest. Because the smartest I ever see was at your wedding. Oh, yes. Oh, I made some effort there. Well, you had to. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Who dressed you then? I did. No, you did. I, mean, I did. I went, I went to Savile Row, got myself custom made suit all by myself, picked it all out, picked out all the colours. Did, did everything? Yeah, did it all. No, no one. Your mom or nope. no, no, no one said. I didn't help. No one helped. It was a surprise when I unveiled it. It was a surprise. The only thing I well, asked, it was a surprise if you saw him, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I looked dapper. <laughs> dapper. The only thing I think I asked my dad about is the size of the like home base of the the check on the trouser. I I went a bit quirky and I was like, "Do you think that it was a bit Mick Jagger?" I said, "I said, do you think that's punchy?" He goes, "No, it sounds great." <laughs> he didn't see it, but I was like, "Is that going to be a bit?" aggressive and he goes yeah. no no i think i love that kind of thing yeah. so it, it looked fantastic um but yeah i i started off by trying to apologize for this voice essentially i think i had a bit too much fun in new york right <laughs> i went to new york at the weekend um i went hard i think i slept you got drunk well i actually did wow. uh, for the first time in a really long time but over and above that i i worked my tits off um i was there for thursday friday saturday i was there for three days yeah I think I must have slept about four and a half hours. Oh, wow, I sound like you. Yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm not sleeping that well at the moment in general. And then the jet lag, and then I was just busy. So, and, I, and also I forgot how loud New York is. So I was staying in this super trendy hotel on purpose. <laughs> Arrived, checked in, and as I was checking in, the bar was popping off so much that I was like, oh my God, I really don't want to go to my room, I want to go to the bar. But I didn't know anyone, and it was like really trendily dark. And I was like, I'm just going to like a weird perv. Just be like, oh, hey guys, and I just landed. So I went to my room, but then I could hear the bar, and then the, the windows that were just not thick, I meant I could hear the whole street and the sirens and the horns, so I didn't sleep that night. And then... Spent all day filming on Friday, left the hotel at 7 a.m., got back at 9.30, passed out, but then woke up at 2 a.m., wide awake, nightmare. Jet lag. Jet lag. Mm. Filmed all day Saturday in the freezing cold. And then, yeah, big night out on Saturday night. Woke up, got straight on the plane on Sunday, came home, and as you can hear, well, mm. had the better for me. So yeah, I, done you in. I apologise. I say, may maybe... Maybe certain people oh, well, listen to Sam. What a what a guy. Um, this will get loads of views, and then next week be back to normal. No one will listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think most people will be like, God, he should have taken a week off. Have a strep, or mate. So I do. Yeah, I apologise, and I might have to clear my throat every now and again. But you know, we don't drop an episode, Tony, just because we're sick. I no, I'm not even sick. I'm just 
I'm out of the game. You know? yeah. I'm too long out of the game. So I have one one beer and, and a, an 11 p.m. bedtime. I'm like, oh my god, I'm on <laughs> <Still> the floor. <laughs> How can can you last on a night out? Not really anymore. I'm a bit old. When was the last time that you went like you went out like got drunk and you were like, oh my god, it's 2 a.m. Oh, that that oh, long ago. <laughs> oh mate, like a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I just I, I I'm not interested. I've done it. No, all. yeah. And even when I was younger, I wasn't really a big party lad when I was younger. I've never been a big party no, lad. No, I just, I'm just I'm just not that sort of person. I, but like, I get up early. Yeah, you do. It's, I like getting up early. I mm. nothing I hate more than accidentally having a lion. No chance. What's your cutoff? So if you wake up and you look at the clock and it starts with a number, what number would make you go, "Oh my god, what have I done?" Seven. Yeah, okay, I was going to say eight. I oh, would accept mate. a seven. If it was like a seven something, I'd probably be like, oh, that's annoying. If it starts with an eight, I literally am like nearly suicidal for the rest of the day. Yeah, Because I feel yeah. like I've missed the whole day. Yeah, it's very, very rare that I'll wake up at eight. I mean, it's not really a thing. I don't remember the last no. time I saw an eight at the start. No. But yeah, no, I, I'm also like, I, I don't really go out. I really don't drink. We've spoken about this before. Mm. But... If there's an environment, firstly, I feel like I've been needing it. I feel like I've been needing it. Yeah, fair. Um, but if there's an environment where, like, I'm, I feed off other people. Okay. So it was a good energy. Everyone was having a good time. You went piling in. I went piling in. Yeah. New York, New York. <laughs> so here I am in oh, the Maserati. Hey. Had a few friends in town. Just, oh, I lived in, I like that city. Have yeah. you ever been to that not city? Been, not been New York. It's no. a good place. Yeah. It's London on crack. Okay. It's a, you know, you could say it's too much. I like, could fit anything worse. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and I'm, I mean, literally on crack. There's just crack addicts everywhere. But yeah. it's, it's, the cliched line is it's a city that never sleeps. It genuinely never freaking yeah, sleeps. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, please go to sleep. Like, mm, yeah. just please shut up. Yep. But uh, if you're in the right mood, it's, yeah, no, I had a good time. Um, but let's talk cars, because that's why I went predominantly, apart from to have a rager. Um, <laughs> rager, I went a bit after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it ruined me. Yeah. Um, we'll kick things off. Huh? Maserati Gran Turismo. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, that's the car I had for the weekend, and I've already put out the main channel video so we can get kind of right into it. So this is a bit of a weird one because that car obviously launched a bit of a while ago. We spoke about it on here on the podcast. Did we? I don't even know. Well, got... Yeah, we did because we were sort of intrigued-ish. We liked the look of it. We liked the fact that it didn't change much, but then we were worried about the engine and the pricing. And Anyway, but I just hadn't seen any. I mean, I hadn't seen one anywhere. I literally don't remember that conversation. Really? No, no, no. That must have been out. It's yeah. It went over my head. Over your head. I mean, it has been out a while, but, right? And they had it at Goodwood last year. Mm. It was going up and down the hill, but yeah, just <laughs> um, and struggling to get hold of one, and there didn't seem to be a lot of reviews going on. I was like, what's happening? So, when I was planning the trip to New York, I thought I'd jump on Churo, which I've used a few times before, which we do have here in the UK, and it is available in other parts of the world, but it's best in America. Mm. It's like Airbnb for cars. Yeah. Well, um, we done is... it when we went. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, hashtag not an ad, <laughs> um, but I'm just a fan. And I, I, I have, I will declare I have worked with them in the past, but yeah. a long time ago. Um, and so I thought, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll have a car to drive around. Let's see what's on. And, and I saw this Maserati Grand Turismo. And I sort of almost couldn't believe it, firstly, because the guy priced it way too low. But I was like, oh, it's a genuinely a brand new Trofeo. And, quite well priced. I was like, cool, let, let's take it. I think, just to clarify, quite good price. Where's my phone? Uh, I think it was for four days, three nights, four days, I think it was 700 quid. Pounds. Pounds. I mean, it's a little it's pricey. It's quite a lot, mate. It's quite a lot, but yeah. obviously I'm making content so I could justify it business-wise. You've, you've, you've paid his monthly payment. Uh, almost certainly. Well, <laughs> we can get into that in a second. Um, I have some amazing stories. Uh, uh, yeah, fair. That is quite a lot, isn't it, actually, now that I think about it? To, yeah. But, but I, if you... Go on. I, I thought, the professional that you are, Yeah. I thought you was actually on a Maserati trip. I, a lot of people did. Oh. You, even Shmi did. <laughs> Shmi messaged me saying, yeah. oh, you're working with uh, Jennifer? And Mas I'm like, no. It was no. a churro card. I just pa paid for it. <laughs> um, I, I was that confident in the video, which was a mistake because it's getting no views. So I've lost money there. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's more than I realise now that I've said it out loud. But it, I think if you'd gone to like Hertz and tried to get a Bentley, because it's a 200 grand car, but well, it's not, it's a £165,000 car. <clears throat> for, for four days, I think you're going to be 
paying that kind of money. Anyway, long story short, I justified it in my head somehow. Man math. Man math. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Might as well have to go into a zoo. So I went to Truro. Um, so I arrived at the airport. Guy was very communicative, very nice. Uh, tall guy, about seven foot. Shook his hand. He was wearing a Polestar cap. I was like, interesting. Oh, we actually come and met you. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, I mean, it doesn't always work like that. No. We, yeah, but we picked up the GT500 from that guy, didn't we, in his workshop? Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so there he was, and I was chatting. And I said, um, super cool. Like, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I was surprised to see the car. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, how long have you had it? He goes, oh, not that long. I said, are you driving it, or did you buy it for business? And he went, well, no, I, you know, it's the last combustion engine Maserati. I thought maybe it'd be a good investment. No. <laughs> which Did you point? break his arm? No. Or? Which point? I was like, mm, yeah. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Oh. Goes, so it's done. It's not even done a thousand miles yet. I was like, well, you're giving it to me. Yeah. It's been sitting in my garage, and I, so I'm doing a weird accent because he had an accent, and it's not very fair to try and replicate. Um, anyway, yeah. So he'd been sitting in his garage since he bought it. He barely touched it, and he thought, well, maybe I'll stick it on Shura and see what happened. He said he had no. I was the first person to even attempt to rent it. And he's at the end of the rental. He's like, I'm going to stick the price up. I was like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, so, yeah, literally, it was a brand new car for me. Right. Barely touched. Um, so I went there thinking I wouldn't like it. Because do you remember our Gricale, Graciale experience? We kind of went kind of intrigued and ended up leaving being a bit like, Ugh. Oh, yeah, the Maserati. The yeah, Maserati, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. little SUV thing. Yeah, yeah, just done the job. Yeah, but it was just un exciting. In uninspiring. A way. Uninspiring. Yeah. Felt very Stelvio Quadrifoglio, but for a lot more money. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of thought that's probably what we're going to find here. Because it's the same engine. It's that Natuno MC20 Julia Quadrifoglio engine. Which they say is not. Yeah. But well, it is. It is. With F1 technology. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as I walked up, the beautiful car. Car looks great. Car yeah. looks really great. Step inside, mate. The interior is spectacular. Uh, yeah. So same design language as the Gracchali, which you clearly don't remember because you had no idea what I was talking about I when, do, I, yeah. when I said that name. But yeah, beautiful interior. And it felt quality. It felt high end. The leather, the stitching, all the buttons, everything felt really premium. I was Fair. like, okay, this is, a, this is a really good start in the right direction. Um, loads of tech, amazing sound system. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going, great. Fire it up. Oh, just that engine. Is a, it's just death. Because mm. it, it doesn't, first, it doesn't sound like a six cylinder. It sounds like a, three pot or a four cylinder like it's this uh, like it's like a hot hatch engine mm. which doesn't suit the visuals of the car yeah, for, okay do you not agree yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as an engine i don't think it's bad but uh, i think it's a good engine as in a strong engine but um yeah i'd agree the noise is not fantastic and bit of uh, a dull droney horrible noise. yeah and it's a boxy noise yeah. like it's just a, it's it, it sounds cheap. Yeah. It sounds cheap. Well, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you say it's strong. It is, but it, it's also quite laggy. Mm. A little, at least in Low that down, form. So yeah. 550 horsepower in this car. So 600 newton meters, something like that. Anyway, a little bit down on F-type R power, basically. Yeah, That's yeah. how I rated it. Yeah, I think it was 600 newton meters. Yeah. So just, just a bit laggy. You know, you compare you, it to an F-type yeah, R. Yeah, that was my whole thing. A mm, little bit unfair, as in that's probably why you thought it was laggy, because the F-type R supercharged, so there's no lag. Of course. So, so different way they deliver the power. Yeah, and the F-type R is more powerful. Yeah, 25 a, horsepower more, 50 newton meters of torque more, supercharged, so you're right, different power delivery. More it's linear. Li it's lighter. Okay. It's 200, really? 200 kilos lighter than oh, F-type wow. R. So... It wasn't a very fair comparison, but it was, for me, the most obvious comparison because Maserati are trying to pitch it as a Continental GT rival. Which is unfair on the Maserati. Yeah, because the, the Bentley's 2.2 tonnes, it's massive, it's different powertrain. Like, you know, so I, I didn't, I couldn't work, I was like, well, it's, it's definitely better, it's definitely different and better than the F-Type, but it's not a Bentley. Anyway, I didn't, the How first... How would you compare it to New Vantage? Oh, well, I haven't driven New Vantage, but very different. Okay. Firstly, it's a two plus two. Uh, all wheel drive, not rear wheel drive. Um, the New Vantage is how much horsepower? 600 and something. So it's it's going to be down by 75 oh, horsepower. Oh, I've got another one for you. Now, the new AMG Merc. I think that's the rival. Yeah. That's okay. the rival. It's bang on the same money. So okay. 165 in the UK. Yep. Um, two plus two, all wheel drive. 165 what? plus. 165 plus. What gearbox does the new Merc have? Mm, what do they use? They normally use a double clutch, but it might be an eight speed, might be a ZF. Well, yeah, so that's what the Maserati's yeah, got. That's what the Maserati's got. Is, so, yeah. But but 
It's super nice on the road. It yeah. has a comfort setting, has various damper settings. Like, this super nice. And, and on the first day, I was like, this is lovely. Found some back roads. No amazing roads. Around New York, you can't find yeah. good roads. But just, you know, I was like, and it, it as one of the, as an F-Type R type car, as in like just something to use as a daily, that you find, occasionally you end up on a nice road, great. You're rocking up to a club, great. Going to dinner, got kids in the back. Like, just does everything. Super nice. As the weekend went on, the 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 tinniness of the engine started to get to me a little bit. Mm. Because everywhere I went, people were like, wow. And the paint was unbelievable. And people were like, this car's beautiful. And people were intrigued. I met some people who were getting one. Like, just everyone was like, wow, what a nice car. I got so many thumbs up. But every time I got in it, it was, I was like, oh. I just wanted it to just be a bit thicker sounding. I don't need it to be a V8. But just have a bit more chunk. A Show bit more, a bit more muscle. A bit more exoticness. Yeah. It just wasn't exotic when I started up. But fantastic car. Fantastic car. Um, overall. Overall. Right. I got into all the pricing and stuff like that. So yeah, 165 plus plus for the Trofeo. They have a, an entry level car called the Moderna, which starts at 133 here in the UK. Plus plus. Same engine. Same engine. 490 horsepower, not 550. But no ELSD. No limited slift diff. Right. And a couple of other things. But actually, I think is the one to have. Right, okay. If you're not going to thrash it, if you're just using it as a cruiser, it's the one to have. Because then it becomes more 911 rival then. Yeah, price-wise, <clears> it's, <throat> it's more appropriate. <clears throat> and then, of course, you've got the electric version, which is all the way at the top. Uh-oh. Yeah, who cares about that? Yeah. But uh-oh in general, because, as I say, I met a few people in order. In America, they're struggling with that car so much. I met a guy who just got two, one for him and one for his son, on lease, and for a 12-month lease of that car, what do you reckon the payments were for the 12 months? Well, what was the deposit? Uh, very good question. Because <laughs> that makes a difference. But it wasn't insane because of what they were saying to me. And at least, obviously, you don't get the deposit back, do you? No, it's gone. It's gone. It, 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 but okay. I bet the car's depreciated like a stone. Who cares? That's what it cost you. Seven thousand dollars. What for the twelve months? For the year. For the year. Six hundred quid a month. Six hundred dollars a month, whatever. Plus the deposit, which probably could be twenty thousand dollars. Maybe it was twenty thousand yeah. dollars. These guys had quite a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. But it wasn't like they were so bamboozled and blown away by the deal. He got two. He's like, I got one for my son as well. Because yeah, I was like, fine. I mean, that is insane. Yeah, we well, don't get those kind of deals here. The <laughs> cheapest one I found was twenty three grand. For the year. Yeah. Well, they're just trying to get them out. Was that through actual Maserati or leasing company? That was through Maserati and apparently okay, a bit of a loophole. Okay, fine. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I looked at some pricing here. The financing isn't fantastic. Um, because of the residuals on Maseratis. Even Maserati doing their own finance, but still it's, it's chunky money. Mm, it, but if they don't sell them, mate, they'll make them more desirable. Yeah, I think so. Like, I think it's like too soon. Cars. Yeah, I think yeah. it's too soon. I think yep. in another 12 months, you'll be getting some big money off. Yep. I think it's a fantastic car. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic car. A few people said Roma rival. Obviously, a second-hand Roma with 5,000 miles on is approaching 145, mm. which is what they're listed at as on the used market at the moment. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, I'd get the Roma, of course. Mm. But but I think once they're 110 or... or 99, 950. Not, yeah, it's a, it's a great car, mate. Mm. I, would love, I would love to have one. I would love to have one. Yeah, fair. It's just a usable thing, but I have to wait and see. Mm. So um, aside from that, what else did I get up to? Um, I did a lot of classic. I've got a lot of classic content coming up on the main channel. Have you? Man. Yeah, man. But you like the old classic I stuff, don't you? I love the classic stuff. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have three... No, four classic videos on a trot, which means that my channel's going to die. <laughs> no, people watch you for that, don't they? Well, I'm not sure. It's a real tough sell, the classics. Is it? Yeah, because unless I'm like, should I buy? People don't, you know, it's hard to get well, the just clicks. just put that in four times. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should frame it as a series. Series. That's a good idea, isn't it? Well, there you go. So, yeah, so I, I went and drove an insanely rare Porsche that you won't care anything about. No, tell me. Oh, I yeah. might like it. You're not going to. 1994. I'm not interested. <laughs> 3.6 Turbo S flak bow. No, a what? Okay, essentially the last iteration of the 964. The ultimate 
Turbo S variant. It's like, it's not really an equivalent, but it like a t- there was 93 of them made. Last of the year called? Uh, no, no, 993 Just, after that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, 993 after that. Yeah. Um, so this was the last cars made before the month. It was when Porsche were literally on their ass, like like the, bra- the brink of bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they turned to the exclusive department, who were one of the few departments that could still make money at that point because they just overcharged for everything. Yeah. And said like, help, still do that now. help us. We've got 93 chassis. Help us. Because um, 993 was about to come out and they're just like, we've got to get, got to get rid of these 964 chassis. Yeah. And so <laughs> exclusive, who at that point were a little bit more larry than they are now, said, well, let, let's just make the ultimate Turbo S. Let's just go mad. Right. So power, visuals, everything. And then the ultimate selling point was the slant nose. Flat bars, the slant nose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that car, yeah. Well, that was the 930 is the one you're thinking of. Right. So they, they it was very popular on the 930 with the slant nose, yeah. with the pop-up headlights. Yeah. The, so popular, they thought, well, that will be our big finishing selling point that we'll charge a 60% premium for. Oh, yeah. So it was a $100,000 car, the, the 3.6 turbo, mm. and they charged $60,000 more for the flat bow turbo S variant. <sighs> Nearly double the price. Insane. And what happened there? Well, cleaned up. 73 of the 93 or 70 something of the 93 cars ordered were ordered with the slap with the flat belt with the nose, yeah genius i'm worth a few quid now oh yeah worth all the quids 750 right. grand like for the quids yeah, all the quids <laughs> mate. um i won't talk too much about how it was but you can guess me in that car freaking out um if you want to know then watch his main channel video. yeah coming on sunday that one this I think. sunday this sunday i hope right. uh yeah this sunday um, but it was like a port, like we went Porsche Fest. I saw some amazing other, some uh, PTS GT3 RS 4 litres, um, went and viewed the most incredible 1960s Porsche race cars. Like, oh, it was like a, I just like freaked out. You just had a nice time. I had a lovely time. Yeah. yeah. And then on the final day, I drove a 1967 Shelby GT500 Mustang. 1967. So the original oh. Mustang, but like the ultimate Badass Shelby. The gone in 60 second one. The Eleanor car. The Eleanor. The Eleanor. Oh, I've never, I'd like to drive one of them. Mate. Like Ollie Webb's got one. Oh, yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Is this a real legit one or is this like a sort of built I, after I, the fact? I'm pretty sure it's a proper one. Mate. Ollie's a proper car. Does he listen? he listen? No, I don't think he's too busy no, doing I mean, cool does. stuff, does he? Oh, I bet he does. Oh, Ollie, if you listen, what's Come up, Come on, son. Um, oh, mate. That. As a Brit... In America, is that not surely like the only car we actually want to drive? It's a bit cliched, but I was so buzzing. They were all taking the piss out of me. All the Americans were like, oh, what a pile of crap. I was like, oh, I was, I was the whole reason I'm here. I've literally flown here to drive yeah, this car. Yeah. You've never driven one before? Never driven a, a vintage Mustang, classic Mustang. Right. And then this is the Shelby GT500. So this was like, so in Did its it period. Hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> in its period, 350 or 355 horsepower, mm. a 275 GTB in its Larry six carb form was like 300 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. So like this was really in fast. its day, like stupid. Probably didn't weigh nothing either. Yeah. Uh, Probably was, light, mate. I bet it was light. Because cars back then were, I mean, it wasn't safe. You didn't want to crash one. But they were very, very light, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I'm just doing some Googling. Um I'm and, and, say, I'll say 1,200 kilos. And obviously competitive uh, in its day. Oh, it's, no, it's 1,400. No, just under 1,500. Really? 1,470, It yeah. must be the engine that's it's making it. It's American. Yeah. It's American, yeah. Well, it's... Seven s- litre. Oh. Seven litre V8. Yeah. yeah. That'll be something to do with it. 350 <laughs> horsepower. I know, but that's what's insane. <laughs> and that's continued. In America, that's continued. Because what was the... Vi- <laughs> there was something which was like a... 12 mm. litre, or no, something, you know, like a 9 yeah, litre. Yeah. Putting out 238 horsepower. It's unbelievable. Look, how, where is the engineering in that? Mate, just like American cars in general blow my mind a bit. I sort mm. of love them. And I love America. I just love America full stop. But yeah, the whole car thing is just wild. Yeah. Um, and we also took out on the same day a 2008. So we took out the three generations of the GT500. So they've only made three era three generations we drove one uh, we drove one exactly so yeah. we drove the newest variant yeah it was all, all right tim's got one i thought it was very good yeah we were i, went, I drove the the one back the middle one which was the 2008 boxy car yeah and then the 67 car so right. i really liked it as a concept i was super happy but the middle car in 2008 huh? had 725 horsepower <laughs> 
mate, death trap. Really? Uh, like death trap. De- <laughs> death, like death trap. Right. Because the, the that newest one we drove that had a lot of horsepower. Seven hundred sixty. Yeah, but but at least it had a bit more. It about was it, it was well put together. A little bit more European. It's still, I don't think, it's as good as a European car. We said that, didn't we? But, I mean, it's better. I yeah, mean, it, it, and it felt deployable enough that you would say it was like an M4 CS rival. Mm, when, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, not as good, but yeah, but, I know but, what you mean. But as in like... The engine made that car special. Yeah, the yeah. engine made that, but it wasn't like stupid. The the 2008 thing... Death trap. <laughs> Like, what is going on here? Not, no straight line. Psychotic. Not, won't go in a straight line? Mate. <laughs> Death trap. Would I have been in the wall? The best part was, which is in the video. <laughs> manual? Uh, manual. Oh, my God. It's in the video. Because <laughs> you can't accelerate. You literally can't accelerate. Right. You just can't. I had kind of got to grips with, like, how to make it step out-ish. <laughs> or just of. put your foot on the accelerator a little bit. Literally. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'll get a... Uh, Drive, point of view driving clip of like what it's like to drive a 725 horsepower from 2008. And I thought leaving a roundabout, I'll just get a little wiggle on. <laughs> You're not driving around. Basically. <laughs> oh, did you? Uh, and, and I, just leave it in. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, sh- I showed the clip. We sat down to do a piece to camera with the guys from, uh, it was Ryan Friedman Motorcars who are the dealers that I was working with. Yeah. And oh, it really, uh, by the way, sorry, side note. I filmed this chat in the car and I got the GoPro angle wrong and I'm really upset because it's a really good chat and the angle is horrific. Anyway, I've left it in. Um, I show them the clip and as I'm loading it, he goes, not on a corner. Because <laughs> you can just see me coming off the thing. He's like, <laughs> he's like, what is about to happen to my car? Um, so yeah, so some good content to come, I think. I, 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 so I had a blast. A lot of classic stuff. Uh, we took a ride in a big my back into town. It was just a good... It was a good Americana experience and plotted and planned some stuff for later in the year. Um, I had a few other meetings in town, which is really the predominant reason I was going. But um, yeah, had a good time. Good what's, job. Been, what's been going on with you, mate? Well, just doing a bit of work, mate. Just yeah? being busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff still selling. Are you still selling the lower end stuff? All sorts. All yeah, sorts. yeah. But, but predominantly, yeah, predominantly like 30 grand down. That's that's where the market is. But it's been moment. all right. It's not quite yeah. as long because you're approaching when's the new reg? Now. It's First right now. March. So that's a good or bad thing for you? Uh, well, there's more stuck about. So, yeah, it's all right. What's that rustling? Can you hear a rustling on the mic? It's the rain. No? I can hear. Oh, is it? Uh, I thought I had a bit of interference. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. So, so, but this is normally a half decent time of year for, you know, it's, it picks up now. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, famously. First quarter of the year is always good, but normally always good. Last year wasn't. But yeah. in general, it is normally, normally good. And it, and it carries on. Sure. Um, you'll have the odd month that isn't that great until the back end of the year, last quarter of the year, and then it dies again. Fair. So, had any Panameras come into stock? No, luckily, okay. no more for me. Thank Damn you. <laughs> I'm quite happy. Do you know what I saw the other day? Go on. I really like them as well. It's an electric car as well. Oh, you cannot believe what I'm about to say. No, I don't think I can. And I, uh, and, I <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I. I haven't got the money to have one, oh, and even if I did, I'm not sure I'd buy it. Where's the new guy? Spectre. Oh, I I'm driving it in a, a few weeks. Oh, mate, I think that's a lovely car, that car. It's half a million quid, though. Yeah, it's all the money. I'm not paying that. I mean, it must be, and that's what I'm looking forward to finding out, so I've got a good <laughs> good trip planned with Rolls Royce on that one. Um, it must be the ultimate electric car. I because think that's perfect. Only thing will be range. It's going to be big and heavy. So how far is it going to go? That'll be interesting to find out. But if you're a Rolls Royce owner, do you care? Like where are you going in that car? Knightsbridge. Exactly. So mm. therefore, you don't. You know, living with the i5, it, you, you're fine. Like and just, if you've got a Spectre, I would say you've got a garage or a driveway, so you can charge it. And you've got other cars as well. And you've definitely got other cars. Yeah. It's very good looking. It's I'll very wait and see what the interior's like. It's the one thing with Rolls Royce, they often let themselves down with the interiors. Mm. Um, it's huge, you're right. But it's, yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't see that coming from you. Yeah, I've got a bit of a fuck it. I look at them often. Do you? I do. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's like, oh, I'll go buy one of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, you do I, not. I, I, mate, I, I, that'd suit me, a Spectre. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. I would. Be, Actually, if, it would. I'd just, nice. Tuxedo, but would you have a race? I would have back in the day. They're ninety grand now. I know, but I wouldn't have one now mm. because the, 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 that's a bill, mate. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah. But back in the day, like I, I really, 
it's only because it was big and cumbersome and I like something that's not. But I'm getting a bit, a bit older winter, now. Though. Yeah, well, you are. You're an old man. Not an old man, but I'm, ju- I'm just like another few years. I'm like coming out of the fact of being rattled around in a car mm. and going into... I mean, I'll definitely have a Bentley in a couple of years. Yes, man. Continental. I'll join you there. Yeah, I'll definitely have... No, I'm 10 years older than you, even though I'm 10 years younger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 10 yeah, years yeah, further down the road. Yeah. I, I think, and I had this conversation with some of the guys over the weekend, if you're lucky enough to do what we do mm. and spend your life around Larry cars, mm. nine times out of 10, when you're not working, you just want to be comfortable. Yeah. That's why I like that Maserati so much. Yeah. It did everything I needed it to do. On, as a, just a car to use. For the weekend, I drove it in the city. I drove it onto some back roads. I took it to some car meets. I, I had people in it. I was using it to film. Like It was just lovely. It was yeah. just perfect. And what, 10 years ago, five years ago, or when I wasn't working in this world, I was like, oh, I'll daily a radical. Mm. You know, oh, I'll definitely daily a caterham. And there are people that do it, and I absolutely applaud them. Fair enough. You're the biggest legends in the world. Yeah. But... When you're spoilt like we are, mm. to be able to go and do trips and have lovely cars and do all that Larry stuff, when you're not driving it, I actually would be so happy in like a diesel A7. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Just want to waft. Yeah. I, I, and I think, in general, most of the general public think the same way as us. Mm. Because that's what the manufacturers build now, by the way. You know, they build these really lovely cars that, that are comfortable, but you can switch modes and then yeah. they become uncomfortable and uh, literally a touch of a button. Yeah. yeah. So I think the manufacturers obviously realised that a while ago and that's why we have so many cars now, even SUVs, that they become literally four cars in one. How long yeah. have we been talking about that? Well, that new range of a Sport SV. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, in terms of it, uh, its variety of, of application. But... <laughs> And I think the people that, and I'm not being disrespectful here at all, I think the people that daily these caterums and stuff, they just haven't been exposed enough to that, that whether they want the car or not, they haven't had newer stuff to run around in all the time. Because <coughs> at, oh, at, at a, at, at, there's a point in your life you just haven't realised it yet that you won't want to be rattled around anymore. I disagree. I've had twenty five years of it. I'm fed up with it. Yeah, now. well, but I, but I, that's the thing. Is I disagree. I think I think the the because we're working in it. If you if you have a nine to five, yeah. If you're in the office and you're driving your diesel C class to work each week, but you said they're daily in them. Fine, or you're daily in them because because if your job is sorry, accountant. If you're an accountant or you work <laughs> at IT help desk or you're selling. Uh, whatever laptops at curries yeah, or, or yeah. whatever and you, it's nothing to do with cars but mm. like you're in a, in a job that you don't enjoy and it's not car related yeah. or maybe you enjoy it it's just not car related therefore the only kick you get is your drive to and from work is the point I was trying to make not slagging off people at curries yeah, yeah. Um, therefore you're going to get your maximum in that window because that's yeah. what you got because maybe at the weekend you're busy so, so it's like but I think there's a period of time where maybe. that happens. I maybe. don't think you go through your life. That's what I'm saying. You won't go through your life being rattled around. There becomes mm. a point in your life where you go, oh, that's enough now. I'm not doing that Maybe anymore. you're right. Maybe you're right. I do applaud the people that don't ever make that decision, though. I can't think there's many. No, but and that's, that's why... they recaptured very quickly. That's why I'm like, well done, son. You yep. know? <laughs> well done, son. <laughs> um, and some people do it the other way around, by the way. So some people... Have always been exposed to comfort and and reliability mm. and practicality, and then they, they get to my seat. age, yeah. yeah, yeah, and they have a complete switch. They have a yeah. wobble on, and they go right. I've earned a few quid. I'm going to go and be uncomfortable for a few Call years. Call a midlife crisis, and yeah. then they have to go and have back surgery. It's like when Paul Wallace keeps saying, oh, "I really want a GT4 RS," and we're like, no, "It's literally don't. the car that you will hate." Literally, he's He'll the man who's obsessed with ride quality. L- li- yeah. yeah, yeah, he doesn't like driving. Doesn't like driving either. <laughs> Doesn't like cars. No, um, doesn't like cars. Speaking of cars that we don't like, uh, let's move on because our beloved Porsche uh-huh. released, but oh, potentially the most exciting car they've ever released, or at least the most powerful. Most Tony. powerful, they said. Most powerful, the Taycan Turbo GT. Good job. Which tops out at one thousand and ninety-three horsepower and weighs four million tons. And if you want it, has no <laughs> rear seats. What a pile of poo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have never been 
less interested in a Porsche in my life. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, and it's a modern one as well. I do we get why they did it? This would make, and I'm not just saying this because it's electric. This would make absolutely no sense, even as a combustion car. What is it all well, about, mate? I can't say that because I'm a Project 8 fan and an Alpha Julia GTAM fan. So it would be silly for me to be like, oh, that's a, a stupid concept. So I, I have to give it to them that it's not, it's never not been done before type thing. N well, I, I agree, but I but, have a different theory on. Yeah, because you slag those cars off. So yeah. I get it. But I, so I, I can't join you in that rhetoric because I've been. <laughs> yeah, join me. I'd come be, on. And I've been eating my own words. So I won't knock them entirely. I do. I. I How are, we, uh, how are we going to drag this out? Well, <laughs> how are we going to talk about this for five minutes? Okay, so hold on a sec. Let's take the. Let's it's got take, a nice wing. Let, <laughs> does it? <laughs> so let's take the benefit. Let's take the positives. Yeah. So Porsche and any manufacturer that is pushing the performance of an electric vehicle is surely aiding in the development of the EV platform and what's possible. Because to get this extreme levels of performance, they're going to have to tackle weight, which they've done in quite an aggressive way. Um, not in necessarily positive uh heat management that's gonna be a big thing isn't it if you're gonna be churning this much power from batteries how to maximize the the amps and the deployment so like like motorsport like all of these things but that has to be seen as a positive i guess mm. i don't want to knock that entirely because mm. you know it's a but 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 have we not established that at the moment extreme performance evs are not really the cars that consumers are, are wanting like we know no one that, wants the normal one. Well, yeah, Taycan. we know that the Taycan is literally um, plummets in value from the second you order one. But let's think of another positive. Yeah, the performance mm -hmm. in a normal Taycan Turbo S. Yes, is blistering. Was it already nine hundred horsepower? What was the new one? The new one, seven or eight hundred. What? Anyway, I thought the new it, one was like somewhere already close. It's to enough, that. mate. It's and it's nearly thousand pounds worth of torque. It's it's less stupid. It's so fast. It's unbelievable. New Taycan Turbo S. Where is it? It's it's the performance figures in that Taycan. It, it's through the roof. Yeah. Two and a half seconds to 60 or whatever it is. So, you know, you're always... In an electric car, you always get that instant power and that... But I don't understand why they're chasing numbers now. Like, the Turbo S is already too fast. I mean, you can say that about a 911 Turbo S, but at least he's got a bit of character. 940 horsepower in the standard Taycan Turbo. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it it's it's marketing, isn't it? It's it's marketing. It's to set the lap records. It's to put Tesla in its place. It's set the lap record around the Nurburgring. Yeah, and Laguna Seca for right. an EV. It's yeah. for an, you know for an EV. Yeah. Um, uh, the thing is, like, as I say, weight saving, I don't think necessarily any of it's been done massively cleverly. Like, so it's 75 kilos in reduction. That's been done with a, a liberal use of carbon fibre. That's our weight. Not, not That's one of us. Yeah, not revolutionary. Yeah. Forged wheels, not revolutionary. Yeah. Soft closing boot mechanism is gone. Not, not revolutionary. <laughs> so, you know, I was hoping they were going to say they've put in this super lightweight new battery or this new lightweight new electric motor, but they, they've just taken everything out. So it's always two tonne. If you get the Vysac pack, you move the rear seats and the rear speakers and two charging ports. Also gone on the floor and boot mats, as well as some sound insulation. So they just literally just remove. like, it sounds horrible. So what they've done is they've removed everything and charged you a load more money. Yeah. Basically. 200 grand. 200 grand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you joking? Yeah, the non Vysac car, I think is 180 something. Let's find the price. And then, obviously, Visac package is usually going to... Here we go, 186, 300 for the Turbo GT. The Visac pack is what? Usually 20 grand? Yeah, easy, 20, 25 so, grand. And also, that's 186, 300 with no options. So that's and it's over 200,000 Well over 200 grand. And the thing's like... I say, like oh, my God. It's Porsche, and I love Porsche, but, like, what is this? And has any... I mean, look at those rear seats. I say I, I shouldn't comment on that, because Project 8, even though I'd have the four-seat turns, you can get the four-seat turns. Anyway, boring story. Um, oh, they've got that wrong. They've and, got this car wrong. But but the thing is, like, who... Who's buying it, mate? That's what I don't get. I mean, it is Porsche, so they'll sell them, right? Because someone will go, oh, I'll get a 918 slot when I saw, I'll buy this. But, but, well, hold on a minute. So they won't want it. They just have to buy it. Yeah. Well, that will happen, won't it? We know and that, that will, will happen. absolutely happen. 
But because it's a you know it's a GT department car, oh, yeah. so it's going to aid. You know, if you're getting a big GT department car, it's going to theoretically, at least the dealer's going to tell you, aid with your future GT department slots. Mm. But who has been sitting there going, you know what I've really been wanting is I really want a, a Taycan. I can take them to the Nurburgring. It will take me an extra three and a half hours to get there. But boy, when I get there, I could do two laps and show off and sit for an hour at the Charger. Um, <laughs> that, cause that's literally <laughs> all you're going to do. Because, you know, as I said, like, like people will come at this being like, oh, you just hate EVs. But but come on, guys, let's just be serious for a second. Surely the EVs we want and need right now, the area that we need the development in, is like the Renault 5. Like, we want the range, the price, the tech, the advancement in battery technology, not the the track specials. No, we need, we need mass market, low budget, town or even suburban ev cars yeah. because that that's most of the market with some price parity e, e, yes yeah. even even like the petrol market is tiny for this stuff and the thing is like to, if you go into the, okay right so what what could you go out and buy that rivals this, you know, so someone Whatever says, you like. Yeah, so someone said, no, no, but Honda's sake. So someone's saying, okay, well, you know, but forget EV versus ICE. Like, with, name me another Porsche GT department um, four-seater, because, you know, it's going to have GT department steering and handling. And we let's not knock it. Taycan is a great handling and driving EV, and the GT department are magicians. So I'm sure it'll be lovely to drive. Yes, it's going to be heavy and it's an EV, but I'm sure it'll be lovely to drive. What's wrong with the K and GT then? Cayenne Turbo GT. Yeah, uh, that's the, that's, that that would be a four seat arrival for that car. You're you're totally right. I would suggest weight will probably be similar, but we can check. Um, I would suggest uh, it's a higher center of gravity, isn't it? The right. Suspension and things. Yeah, maybe the maybe the maybe the Taycan for a lap round Nurburgring might be a few seconds faster, but. There's no prizes at the end of an Urbo room lap, by the way. No, but what I was trying, I was just trying to play devil's advocate and be like, you know. So am I. I'm trying to help. Yeah. What What else can you go and buy that, that offers that, you know, Project A, Alpha Julia GTA. Okay, fine. They're three, four, five years old now. That Range Rover you drove? That's it? probably not going to be theoretically dynamically as good right. as this. And not SUV. Give me something because I say saloon. <clears throat> okay. Give me M5 a, then. Yeah, maybe the new M5. M5 CS. Maybe the new, new, one. new M5. Yeah. And we can keep going. There's so many, mate. There'll be loads. Of fast Audis, fast Mercs. And the problem being that this is 200 grand. I, I mean, I know, I know it's a Porsche, but... New AMG GT. Mm, no, four-door. Oh, four-door. Yeah, yeah. All right, the, yeah. the AMG GT4 then. <laughs> four-door, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's just... Oh. But the the problem is, by what's the, the way, range going to be? No, but it, well, it'd be the same as the. No, but no. When you get started getting Larry, I mean, this is going to be in the point two, so they are claiming that big three hundred odd mile range. But it's a lie. But it's and on the Turbo S, I think it's not. I think it's two seventy or something like that. Y and then start driving it with all this power. Yeah, just like a normal combustion car. If we're going to try and stick up for electrics a bit, when you drive a combustion car fast. The range goes down dramatically, especially these these big heavy stuff, you know, the big V8 four-door saloons. And by the way, no one buys them as a combustion car. So what chance they got of buying that? It's and, useless. And also, again, like just... Oh, They've got it wrong. Is not one of the biggest selling points today of GT department cars, the engine? It's 100%. Yeah. I mean, 100%. The fact that our cars go to 9,000 RPM and sing like that and give you all that power in that last 500 RPM or 2,000, like, no. that's what you change. Like, if you put a turbocharged six, you know, whatever, they stand, like, the GT department stands out because of the engine. Yeah. And so, well, you it's, could say, it's handling and brakes as well, mate. It, of course, it, but, but do you know what I mean? Like, if they. I know what you mean. They yeah. have stuck to that naturally aspirated four litre for on, a reason. On purpose. Whilst have, yeah. the rest of the range has gone all to the turbos. Yeah. They, there's a reason why they've stuck to that because that is a. It's a motorsport engine. Correct. So just to say, well, but this is a GT product Porsche, it's going to be amazing. I'm sure it'll be very, 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 very good. I just don't understand the point in it. 
I'm not saying it's not going to be good. I'm sure it'll be fantastic and I'm sure it'll be lovely to drive and exciting and exhilarating and mind altering. And you'll think, how can it do this performance? But why on earth would you buy one? But, pe- but people will say that about a lot of cars, as in, you know, we- we've, sat- we've sat here before loads of times and says, why have, why have the manufacturer bought- built that engine car? Why have they built that electric car? Why have they built that? But the problem is with the difference between electric cars is, is it's the future. Yeah. And that is not the future, what they've just built. <clears throat> well, it's not the future we need right now. Like, I would rather... Ever? Like, What's all that about, mate? Mm. It's, not, it's, it's not a thing. Yeah. If you're going to build a, a track-focused car, if you take our cars as, a, as, a, as an example, light, not mm. low to power, good brakes, good handling... That car is the polar opposite to everything I've just said. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if it's a precursor to the forthcoming electric Caymans and Boxsters, I, I don't like I don't want it, I don't want this mm. I don't want this route to be, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, mate, I I I, I, um, I would have preferred them to come out saying we've made a uh, Taycan lightweight, a Taycan RS. Or no, you know. But li- it wouldn't li- be lightweight, no, no, would but it? It would if they came out and said, we've made it, we've reduced, we've taken this battery pack away, we've removed this motor, it's rear-wheel drive only, we've re- like we've managed to cut out 250 kilos from the car. And it's 400 and, horsepower. It's 400 horsepower, and it's on skinny tyres, like a, like a Taycan T. Yeah. A Taycan, I would have been way more excited. Yeah. You can throw this electric car around. It's got, we've upped the torque, so it's really torquey, but not loads of power. And it's just, it's a fun to drive, lightweight. The, okay, the, we've curled the range a bit, but who cares? It's just for a silly little driving car. Rather than here's your 1,000 horsepower, 200 grand. I, you know, the thing is, mate, it, it literally goes, and it, but it literally goes back to how can we maximise and make as much money as we can from this platform? Yep, because yep. because basically, <laughs> that really, really doesn't cost much more to make. We've said this before mm. than a normal one. Mm-hmm. But it's 30%, 40% more. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's the old SUV question again. Yeah. It's, the, it's why the SUV market is the, 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 the biggest market in our country and probably nearly world. Mm. It's because it doesn't, it, it's, it's the car to have. Everyone buys them. They charge more money. It doesn't cost any more to make than a saloon car. Mm. So the, the manufacturers are... Winner, winner. Win, yeah. So yeah. that's why they're making it. Same, it'll be on the same production line as the Taycan. So the, 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 the car... The, it's yeah. all about money, mate. Yeah. And, and I think it is to rival that Model S played. You know, that, that, that car has been, I think, fairly successful for Tesla. Um, and I think Porsche are trying to, you know, pull, pull back some of the creds and they want to be a, a mover in this space. And... I don't know. I just, I just am like, why? I no just... one's going to Nurburgring in that car. Well, someone will, mate. There'll be an odd person. There's someone but... will for a few times just to be like, look at me in yeah, my electric yeah. car. Yeah. And it will be good. Like, like, let's not deny the fact we love Porsche and Porsche get it right. That will be a good car to drive. Will it be comparatively to a combustion engine vehicle? Good. Arguably not because of the weight distribution. But the Taycan is a good car to drive. We both agreed on that. Absolutely, is a good car, and to this drive. will be a better version of it. So it will be good. It yeah. will be. Well, it should be. But it's it's just unnecessary, I think. Where yeah, what's it for? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Anyway, let us know your thoughts below. Are you thinking that we're wrong in this? Are you super excited? Do you think this is the ultimate? Are you now suddenly going? That's the EV that I'd have, maybe. And we're not being anti EV. This is a car. We're just. This is basically, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, it's a car. Whether, if that had had a petrol engine, I'd have said the same thing. You would have, Stupid. to be fair. Yeah. I would have got really excited. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on. A few headlines I just wanted to touch on before we wrap up. UK records strongest February for new car sales in 20 years. Here we go. Electric and plug-in hybrid growth outpaced petrol and hybrids and diesels as the fleet mu- fleet propped up the market. Yeah. Well, this goes along with the saying, oh, it's a bit more EV bashing, which we don't really want to do. But anyway, let's stay to the positive. Yeah. Uh, in total, 84,000, just under 85,000 new cars were sold in February, according to the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. <coughs> this was a 14% increase over the same month in the year prior. Mm. Now, give me the inside track. To qualify a sale, is that a sale to an individual like a customer or is that just you know registered cars on a registration 
fine. Basically, for, if it's a manufacturer, they only care about registration. So basically, just get all the dealers to register the cars. Fine. So that's that's not telling us exactly the, it's not the telling full us anything. picture. No. Okay. All it's telling us is that the dealers have got a load of cars. It's saying that there's 85,000 cars in the UK. Pretty in much. February. Okay, fine. <laughs> On a full call. Because um, no one, the, 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 the general public will always wait to March for their Well, car. I was going to say, and is that in preparation for March? Is that like, let's get a load of stock in so we can do a load of incentives and deals in March? Or that's not quite... Well, if they're, if they're registered, no. Because they'll ah, be, fine. they'll be, they'll be registered. So the they'll be, plate. they'll be February, they'll be, you know, 2073 plate, but 24 registered And there's cars. not an incentive of like, we'll do this deal because it has to go by the end of this month? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Okay. It's, it, so basically, it'll be a first quarter quota and they want them out. Mm. So what they'll say is, they'll say, well, you know, you can order this car now for first of March or you can have this February car that was registered in February. You can have 10 grand off. Yeah, yeah it gives you now. It's, but it's got to be done. You've got to do it now but before the end of the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, Porsche 911 Hybrid confirmed for summer 2024. That'd be That's a good the car. 992.2, yep. um, which they're saying they reckon it's going to be Carrera S, Carrera GTS, Turbo. Turbo S is going to be hybrid. The standard Carrera, non-hybrid, and the GT products, non-hybrid. That's what they're suggesting, yeah, yeah. but we'll find out. And then this took the social media world by storm, especially because I was in America and my algorithm picked up on that. This Rivian... R2, mm. which is like a little crossover Ionic 5 looking thing. Yeah. People went wild for. We haven't quite caught on to the Rivian hype, I don't think, in Europe slash the UK yet. Are we getting it? I think so. Like, there are test cars knocking around. I don't really know what's going on, but it's one of those brands that's sort of really picking up in America and people seem to love or hate, but is doing well, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, this thing came out and people just went absolutely nuts for it. Right. Took over my entire, yeah, feed. Right. Um, I can't work out the size of it because it's an American market focused car. Is it? Here we go. R2 is roughly in line with the Model Y. So that's just below Model X in this country. Mm, is that right? Mo Model Y is like mm, Q5 size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's that's a nice size, I think. I mean, it does look cool, this thing. Looks beefy, looks cool. You know, d definitely more appropriate for this country than the big Rivian mm -hmm. pickup truck. Yeah. And if they are coming this way, I think that's going to be a good thing. R2 is in for US launch, first half of 2026. Then the international sales follow soon after. But yeah, people are very positive with these things. Um, let's see. Two battery packs. Has it got 300 miles of range? So that sounds pretty good. Yeah. But then it's, you know, quick as always, 0 to 60. Yeah, I think this thing looks good, but there you go. That's the most important thing. Pricing around 35 grand. So European models will probably nudge that pi price past the 40K mark. But I think 40, Plus. 45K. Plus options. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. US cars usually come fairly well equipped with just yeah. a few packs. Yeah. You know, if you look across the board to the Chevys and the Fours and stuff like that, they're, they're pretty, you know, it's not like a Porsche or BMW yeah. where you go from. Miles adding All right, options. so let's take that car as an example. That's, that's, we're on a better track now. 45 so, grand, good looking, right size, yeah. right mileage range, yeah. right price. Well, l l let's have a bit more range because that's not enough range because it won't but, but be... nothing else does more than that, mate. Yeah, but, that, but that's, this is what I'm saying. It needs oh, to be... in general? In general. Fine, this, yeah. Th this is what I'm saying. If we're, if we're, This is where we're going we always have a different conception. But if this is where we're going, because we're talking about it right now, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. get let's get that up. Sure. Let's just sure. Get, the, get the price down a little bit more and then maybe people are buying. What is um, a Q5 these days? Uh, I expect 160 grand probably. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I actually think 45-ish. 40, 45. Yeah. But, the, but they're saying it's going to be 40. So I'm saying 45 with a few options. Right, okay. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool, and and that's a for me that's a good range in this market, um, in this current point of view. I, I'm intrigued by that. I, I would like to see that. I think I'm back off to America in the summer. When do they say? Oh no, 2026. We've got a while to wait. But I, no, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. I the think, big you know. the biggest problem we're going to have with EVs going forward is repairing the confidence in the general public, because I cannot tell you. I'm not talking about petrol heads here or EV heads here. I'm talking in general, people I speak to every day, normal general public cannot tell you how many people say to me, oh, I don't want an EV car. 
because of the confidence of yeah, charging but... it and the it, it, like everything. Yeah. Like it's and and by the way, quite <clears throat> a lot of these people were in. Yeah, but that narrative will change, mate. Because well, it's look, got at my, to. look at my experience with the i5. I, I've found the public charging network to be super easy and super reliable. Two years ago, I had a completely different experience. So I've been waiting, 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 loath to go back, terrified about trying to live with the car and what that experience would be, given how much I travel around the country and need to rely on the public charging network. And the one thing which hasn't been an issue has been the public charging network. Right. So just in that period of time, that has changed my belief that, okay, so that's made, that's made life a bit easier. I have done a few longer trips in the car and known that I've been able to rely on that network, known how to navigate it and, and, and not been screwed over. There have been other pitfalls, which we'll get into when I do my big i5 review when it's, you know, living with the car for six mm. months and everything I've learned. Mm. So I'm already someone that's gone back, having been, had a bad experience, stayed away. I've now gone back and I'm having a more positive experience. Yeah. So, so the narrative will continue to evolve and change. I get where you're coming from, but because everything is happening so rapidly with all of future mobility, not just in the EV department, hybrids, combustion, synthetic fuels, hydrogen, like there's so much going on, mm. that confidence will change very quickly. Because yeah. if you think about it, the general public are two years behind where we were two, two years ago. Yeah, easily. You know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're only catching up now into the lack of confidence. So yeah. as our narrative starts to change, which I think it will because of the fact that more promising cars are coming to the market because yeah. of the public network. So then they'll start to have some confidence come back. So in another two years, people will go, oh, I've heard it's got a lot better actually. And yeah. oh yeah, the cars, you know, they're stabilizing. Oh, there's some good few options out there now. Then but they'll it, start to make a shift. But it again. has got a lot better, but you still have flaws. You yeah, still, still have flaws. I still, of course, still, I still have flaws. You, yeah, still, yeah. you still have problems. And Absolutely. These problems do not arise in a normal combustion car. And I get that it's not been around a lot and they do need to evolve it and they're going to continue to evolve it. But instead of being negative or positive about an electric car, let's let's just see it as another form of transport and yeah. it's not the end game, which is how we... Yeah, like, yeah, for that, sure. That, it, it, that's it's always not, been it, the point. Yeah, that's right, but it's not... But th I think people don't think that. They think the no, electric but, is the end game, that's it. But but it's not going to be. Oh, I get, I'm get. i so hesitant to even go in on this topic because I just know that the comments are just lights on fire. Because no, we're not too, having a go, mate. I'm trying no, to have a conversation. But you, but you don't realise you are having a go because what you're doing is you're lighting a fire in the bellies of pro EVists because... Well, don't be so touchy then. Like, yeah. I'm, 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 li I'm yeah, literally just trying to... I'm trying to have a, a normal conversation here about where this is actually going to go and where it's going to finish. I'm asking questions. I don't need people shouting at me that have never driven an EV in their life because someone told them it's a good thing to have. Or they do, they live with an EV. Or they live with an EV, but they live in a perfect world in a perfect life. I had a, I did a post uh, with, my, uh, with the i5 before last week or yeah. before we, where, wherever we were going um, to film the SF90 and saying, oh, you know, my home charge is broken. And so I've got to make a decision. It's 7 p.m. at night. I've even got to drive down the road, charge the car. It's going to be an hour and a half round trip at 7 o'clock at night. I've got to tell my wife, sorry, can you wait for dinner till 9 p.m. because, you know, I've got to go charge the car. Yeah, or yeah. I've got to wake up and leave home at 5.30 instead of 6 or whatever to charge on the way. Blah, blah. You know, a hassle. And a guy came back so aggressive, so fuming, yeah. saying you're misrepresenting electric cars and I live with an iX3 and I do 2,000 miles a week and I have no issues and this is... And I said, I'm Good. not slagging things off. I'm just exactly. I'm sharing my real world experience. Yeah. But this your is why your real world experience, yeah, not it, his. Yeah, yours. exactly. Like, like, but I get a bit down about it, mate, because I feel like over the last few weeks or months on this podcast, we've been continuing to do what we always do, which is the only thing we do do on this show. Just talk about what we get up to. Absolutely, our experiences, our lives, our opinions. Yeah, we are not here to. Do anything but that. We are literally just, uh, the intro is uninformed enthusiasts. Yeah, that when, is what we're here to do and talk about. You are a professional in the motor trade. I make YouTube videos. We're sharing what we get up to. But I just, the amount of vitriol and hate and negativity and aggression around this whole topic, it actually makes me go, I just, I just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but we're just having a conversation, mate. I know. That's but all it, we're doing. It gives me anxiety. Yep. <laughs> because I, I I now, I'm like sitting here going, I might just delete the end of this chip, like this episode because I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And just the fact now that we're discussing it, 
I'm just being completely raw and honest with you all. Yeah. It actually demotivates me to do the podcast. Yeah. Because realistically, we're in a world where you and I are experiencing being exposed to discussing on a weekly basis electric cars, the whole news. I went on auto car this morning, the car news section to go, oh, look, what, anything we should talk about. Every article is about an electric car. Because and that's I'm the newest here, thing. That's what's going on in the yeah, world. That's, that's what's the world. going on. And I'm sitting here going, well, we, I don't want to talk about it. Mm. Because then our comment section becomes absolutely filled with negativity and aggression yeah. and, and people determined to tell us that we don't know what we're talking about mm. and that we're clueless and that we're just haters. Yeah. And I'm just a bit like, well, then, cool. We'll just yeah. sit here and each week we'll talk about F-types. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 and 9-11s. Yeah, F-types and 9 <laughs> So I'm sorry to have a bit of a moan at the end. Maybe it's because I'm still recovering from my Saturday night. But we are. I, I genuinely, the last 10 minutes, I've had anxiety. Yeah, have you? Yeah, because because I've just been thinking, oh, we're yeah, going down yeah. this route now, talking about EVs, and and, and it, it stresses me out. So, yeah, well, look, make of it what you will. Um, I'm sure I know exactly what to find in the comment section, so I'll be avoiding that. And next week, we'll be back trying to find a desperate Another electric yeah, car to talk about. <laughs> Actually, but no, long story short, uh, next week, oh. uh, another shout-out. We did mention it. Uh, we're doing a Rate My Ride. Thank you so much for we got all a lot, the... Mate. Yeah, all the feedback for, for, for the Rate My Ride episode with the SF90. Uh, loved that so many of you enjoyed it. We picked up on some of the comments that some of you said, some really good constructive comments. Yeah, this, yeah. This, this is the part of you that we love. The, we do. You know, when you when you say, look, this is what you like, this is what you didn't like, maybe gave some suggestions, some ideas, some formats. So we may tweak a few things. But next week, Wednesday, the 20th of March, we are looking to film the next Rate My Ride style episode. Do we know what it is yet? We have a few options, but I'm just doing a last minute call out just in case somebody else wants to get in, get in the mix. Something really interesting. Something Can we do really, something really interesting? Yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah. So something quirky and different and something. So uh, next Wednesday, car needs to be available southeast of England. Um, uh, so that's on, quite a big place though, on mate. On Wednesday, the 20th of March. Well, we can get around, can't we? Well, Cornwall's the southeast of England. That's the southwest, mate. Good geography. No. <laughs> uh, so get in touch, btg at seenthroughglass.com. That's btg at seenthroughglass.com. If you have a car uh, that you want Tony and I to review for this podcast, yeah. as I say, must be available next Wednesday, the 20th of March, in be able to get the car to the southeast of England. Um, but that's it. We wrap up the episode. Yeah. Look forward to being back with you next week. Uh, if you want to follow Tony in the meantime, he's at Tony Gravel with Car Sales on most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass, and this podcast is at Behind the Glass underscore underscore podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>